Hi guys, Joshua Peterson, Peterson Electric. This is the third part of this video and the last final part of it for the uh, power outage at the motel here in Loveland. I want to show you here. So now that I'm all cleaned up, I made sure my breakers were stabbed in correctly. I put them back in the same position so I didn't change how the labels was uh, how the label was set out for these breakers. I just opened them up, had Alicia help me and pull put, and then we put them back in after we sanded down the bus bar, the ground bar, and the neutral bar. Um, now I always like to use a Klein uh, insulated 600 volt um, straight flathead and all my tools. But hey, we got pulled up for power flickering, so let's make sure that we don't do anything really dumb, like not check the breakers. Let's go through and just verify that every single breaker, and then again, of course your grounds aren't gonna really matter as much as far as the conductivity of electrons flowing on this, but you still wanna check your grounds on the other side, just because of the fact that we are bonding metal throughout these circuits. So these are all neutrals on this side. And again, we're on the we're on a sub panel, which is on the load side of our main disconnect on this building. And the building is not so old that it wasn't constructed as such that in Article 250, I believe it's in 122 as well as 264, talks about keeping your grounds and your neutrals separated from each other. This is our bonding jump jumper for the cabinet. But right here you can see that our neutral and our grounds are completely isolated from each other. And no grounds on the way up have had any uh, contact to those neutrals, which is good on the sub-panel side. And all of these grounds look tight. And then we'll just check again now on the left side of the panel, which is our odd numbers. Again, this is going to be every other phase, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, and A. So, everything's tight. We're good to go. Anyways, thanks for joining us, guys. Have a good day.